Hey developers, today we are going to do a portfolio site breakdown. We're going to take a look at some web pages, some personal websites. I'm going to give you what I think they did right and maybe a few things that they can work on. Let's take a look. Hey, before we begin, I just want to give a little slight disclaimer that this is my own opinion. So if you have a different opinion, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think about these web pages. And also while you're at it, in those links and descriptions below, I put a link to my program with Eric website where you can sign up for my mailing list, which is awesome because I give out free courses. I give you tips and tricks for web developers. If you're starting off as a web developer or if you're really interested in Ember Jazz, Vue Jazz, lots of different frameworks, check it out. Hey, so this is a list of websites from a web from a Facebook group called Hackathon Hackers. So here is a bunch of different people and uh, links to their websites. These are all personal websites. So we're going to see blogs, we're going to see portfolio sites. So I want to do a f review on a couple of these. I'm just going to pick them at random to see what they look like. I'm going to see what people are doing and I'm going to give you a little bit of critique of what I think they could be working on, what they can do better. Let's take a look. So I'm going to start off with this one, Sebastian Mers. I'm going to open a link to new window. Okay, I like this. So first, one thing I like with personal sites, especially portfolio websites, is you put a picture of the person in there. I think that is extremely important. I, I've seen so many personal websites, so many blogs and portfolio sites where they, they don't even have a picture of the person in there, and I really like that. I really like the clean and nice design of this. Um, really easy on the eyes. You have the resume links on the left hand side. So really for any website, for any personal portfolio website, you really need to have at the bare minimum a LinkedIn and GitHub. So I don't, this is something I see a lot of people do. They put their resume as like a link on their website and it downloads a PDF. And I'm always thinking like, why, why do that? Cause you can click on their LinkedIn and it brings up their LinkedIn. And so this guy's at Sequoia Capital, which is great. Uh, so I always think like, plus resumes normally have like your address and phone number in it. And I don't really like having that information public. And if you remove the address and phone number from your PDF file that you link on your website, then you know why, what's the usefulness of it? I don't know. I would rather just have a LinkedIn link then have a resume link and then also if you get a new job or you need to update it then you need to update it twice and you update it here in the resume and also in the linkedin and most people just don't and what i find what often happens is that the resume on the website gets you know it gets pretty old and nobody updates it uh, let's take a look at a little bit of behind the scenes here i use a website called built with it's really simple kind of gives me an idea of like what they're doing so it has Apache backend, DigitalOcean, I like to see that. It means that they're hosting it themselves and that they probably know a little bit about web dev. And especially if you're a web developer and this is a personal site, I like to see that. Um, Google Analytics, so nothing crazy. They're on a Ubuntu server. I also like to put it in page speed insights to see, kind of get an idea of like how well this is working. So it looks like it is responsive, but it's poor. Some of these are kind of minor critiques. So even though it says 60, 60 out of 100 here and page speed tools for the website, I don't really put too much. It's kind of, it's kind of a little nitpicky, I guess is what I'm trying to say, but this, they're matching some optimizations for images, eliminate render block JavaScript and, and CSS and above the full content, uh, browser caching, that could be just a digital ocean configuration on their, on their Nginx or I guess their Apache server and some minify html the desktop also same kind of issues that google's telling me about if i take a look at the site itself i can inspect it and you can't really see what i'm looking at um so maybe i'll move my window here but yeah you can see head uh again yeah, i mean looks like pretty clean html body you can kind of take a look at the source um, here's the CSS, nothing's minified, that's fine. Here's the profile picture, it does look kind of big. I mean, it did say, mention something about how they didn't do any sort of, it, they didn't do any like compression, so that could be something. 
looks like there's no like frameworks or anything like that. So that's, that's fine. It looks like it is not really, it's not really actually responsive. Actually, it just looks like it's just the same page as small. Um, not, I would fix that. I would try to maybe on smaller screens, put the picture above the top of the screen, move the links to the bottom. I mean, kind of do something here. That doesn't quite look right. So it's definitely not responsive. And also getting an error in the console for some f resource didn't load, which I, not, not that big of a deal, but uh, last, I like when people do this, when they put like a last updated. So it kind of gives you an idea of, of like when they've updated this. So I, and I also really like this. I'm currently a student at UC Berkeley studying electrical engineering, computer science. I was a member of the 2015 Burke squad when the Western region. I like this because really when you, someone comes to your website, you really only have about 10 seconds to get their attention. And I think this, and you really want to put content behind it, content before kind of WYSIWYG graphic or graphics and, and craziness and animation. So I, I like how he explains right off the bat who he is. He has a picture of himself. He has links to his LinkedIn GitHub. I like that. Let's click on his projects. ECC problem generator. So yeah, this is a, this is really common. I see this a lot, and especially new programmers who are just coming out of school. They always like to put in their their computer science projects in here. And I don't know. Let's see if it works. Okay, ECC problem. Yeah. Okay. And he did mention. It looks like it works. He did mention he's more of an electrical engineer. Um, with computer science. So I would like to see here, if you go to his GitHub, does he have any other projects? I don't, I, I hate this where it only shows two green arrows here. I mean, or two green boxes here, which means that he doesn't really use GitHub a lot. That's usually not a good sign for a, uh, a recruiter that would might be wanting to hire him. He should at least, there's so many projects out there, or open source projects, he could easily fill up all these boxes I don't know if he really has Donald Golf Counter personal website. I, I do like this too. This is another thing I recommend, especially if you're a new developer. Put your personal website in your GitHub so people can see how it was created. You can see here, looks like he's using Python. So that that's a plus there. I don't know. I would say like maybe in your projects folder. Like maybe put some of the other stuff you've worked on in your GitHub, at least some information about it. That might be good. Press. This is interesting. Interesting. A few articles about things I've done. So he does some esports stuff. He has some articles that mentions him or his company, or I guess when he was working in undergrad. That that's really interesting. I've never I've never really seen this too many people's personal portfolio websites but this is awesome if he has all these articles and he's mentioned in there i mean the links all work is a rising junior at yale who attended last week's yo hackathon so he's definitely getting some press so that that's pretty awesome there awards and this is really this is impressive like like i said most people don't even have press or awards so he's won some hack rate hack some startup awards, People's Choice Judge, Judge, Judge's Choice, excuse me, Free Ventures Accelerator. He won some prize at the UC Berkeley Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. Yeah, so this is great. Like, look at hackathons. A lot of people join hackathons and they may may get a prize or they may attend. He's attended a lot of different hackathons and he's put a lot of awards in. So I'd love to see this. This is great. So overall, pretty good. I, I like the simplicity of it. I think if he could just maybe just a few tweaks here and there, I'd love to see a blog too added somewhere or at least a link to a medium so you can see kind of his, what he's been working on. I would maybe update some more of the projects, especially if he has all these awards from these hackathon, where are all these, the code for all this? He should put those in his project somewhere, which makes sense. Um, but overall, pretty good job. Okay, so let's pick one more and let's take a look at it. Let's do Steven Bach. Let's see, does this work? Okay, so 
Okay, hi. Hey, I'm Steven. I'm a recent PLU graduate who's been busy writing software and joining the Pacific Northwest. So once again, great that he used a picture of himself that I give plus one for that. That's great. Kind of little bit short on content here. So all he gives is that he graduated from PLU and he lives in the Pacific Northwest. So that doesn't really help me much. Let's just look at a couple of things here. Let's put it in. Let's see if we can figure out what it's built with. So Namecheap, private email, DNS, jQuery, Fawn Awesome, Bootstrap, and uses GitHub hosting, which is pretty par for the course. I see a lot of people, especially a lot of students who want some cheaper, use GitHub because it's like free. Uh, let's take page insights to see what it tells me. Since it's a really simple website, it should rank high. So once again, 74 is pretty good, I think, and just some minor caching issues. Let me see. I mean, does he really? I can't see this. So I'll move this. I'm wondering if he really is doing any sort of responsive design. I mean, yeah, it looks like it is a little bit, especially with Bootstrap. He probably just put it in there, so that's fine. I let's see here. Let's look at his GitHub. A little bit more activity. I like to see this a little bit more. Has a few pin projects, has quite a few stars, has some followers following. So that, that I, I always like to see that. That's good for a portfolio website. Once again, I'd like to see some of these projects somewhere on his web page. I'm guessing some of these he created for school and some of these are just private or fun projects he's worked on. Not to at least 28, so there must be one in here. Uh, he has his Twitter. Let's click on that. Link works. Lots and lots of tweets. 16,000. Lots of uh, 289 followers. You know, not bad. He's uh, gives a link to PLU News. Uh, I don't like that picture at all. I know it's sort of being funny, but as a software developer and I'm trying to hire somebody, I would look at that and kind of think it's kind of odd. I much prefer he'd use this kind of more professional picture. I. Uh, which would be better. Uh, this is also something I really like. I like when people put their email, a link to their email somewhere, either on their GitHub, which he does, um, or on his actual um, web page itself. And also he used his name in his URL, which also looks good, and he uses his name in his email, which is good. So I like that. The LinkedIn, I guess it's the wrong link to LinkedIn, so that's not good. So he needs to fix that. The one thing this is lacking, of course, is just content. You know, he could definitely do a lot more with this. I think for any good portfolio website or personal website, you at least need to have um, an about page, like that last page we saw had press. Give some at least a couple of paragraphs on who you are and what you're doing. This is just one, two. Two sentences, definitely not going to entice people. Most people will just click on here and say, oh, this looks nice, and then click out. So definitely can use some work there. And I mean, you can kind of get an idea of what he's doing here by looking at the source code, but I mean, we saw it was just kind of a bootstrap site. Hey, so thank you for watching this video. If you are interested in web development, there is a link below to my website programwitheric.com on there you can sign up for my mailing list and i will send you great free content every week on the most popular web frameworks advice for new developers and much more thanks so long